Derby lightweight, no. 79,900, operating on the line on which she was originally tested when new some 55 years earlier, fully restored to passenger carrying standard from being former test car Iris. The unit is now a unique example of a Derby lightweight single car unit. Class 122, no. 55,006, operating away from home, at Butley on the Severn Valley Railway on October 15, 2004, whilst taking part in the Railcar 50 event. This unit is painted in original BR green livery, and is usually based at Worksworth. The route of the railway, running north from Duffield, via Worksworth, to Ravenster the Ecclesbourne Valley Railway is a nine-mile-long heritage railway in Derbyshire. The headquarters of the railway centre on Worksworth Station, and services operate in both directions between Worksworth and Duffield and from Worksworth to Ravenster. From April 2011 onward, Passengers are now able to board and alight heritage services at Duffield where in recent years a station platform has been reconstructed. Heritage services are timed to connect with East Midlands Railway Nottingham, Derby, Matlock service at the adjacent Duffield. Network rail platforms and therefore it is now possible for passengers to travel to and from Worksworth by train from anywhere on the national network. The Ecclesbourne Valley Railway is named after the River Ecclesbourne and the track follows the river from its source to its confluence with the River Derwin at the Derbyshire village of Duffield. Despite being a branch in itself, there is also a separate half-mile branch operating from Platform 3 at Worksworth Station up a 1 in 27 gradient incline to Ravenster. The line is operated by a large fleet of heritage diesel multiple units, as well as diesel and visiting steam locomotives. Locomotive hauled trains initially only operated on enthusiast and special event days often alongside the DMU fleet, whereas now locomotive hauled services make up a larger part of the railway's timetable. The Worksworth branch was the product of early 19th century railway rivalry. Since 1835 Worksworth citizens had been promoting the idea, among others, for a branch line from the North Midland Railway, later the Midland Railway, at Duffield. The Midland was initially unenthusiastic, but then realized that the branch could be extended to Rousley, albeit with difficulty, avoiding this section from Ambergate. On its Manchester, Buxton, Matlock, and Midlands Junction Railway, which was shared with its rival the London and North Western Railway. It is for this reason that all of the bridges along the line, including the one which simply has a head shunt under it are built to double-track Grand Midland Railway style. The eight-plus-half-mile line was surveyed in 1862 and received parliamentary assent the following year. It would follow the valley of the river Ecclesbourne with no major obstacles apart from the final climb into Worksworth. A cutting was required, and some buildings were demolished, while there was considerable upheaval in Duffield. The final inspection of the line was carried out by Colonel J. A. Rich of the Royal Engineers on September 26, 1867, who approved the line for opening. The line was opened to Worksworth on October 1, 1867 and was initially worked by the staff system. Under the original scheme, it would have descended from Worksworth to Cromford using a 1,503-yard tunnel and a 280-yard-long viaduct. And proceed parallel to the existing line, but on the west side of the river through Matlock to Rousley. However, when the lease expired on the original Ambergate line, the LNWR withdrew, and the Midland acquired complete control. Thus the section beyond Worksworth was never built. The Midland was left with one of its few branch lines, and one which, it felt, was of questionable viability. The presence of the line allowed Worksworth's limestone business to develop, the carriage of which was its mainstay until the middle of the 20th century. There was also farm produce, particularly milk, some 800,000 imp gal daily, and a number of textile mills. It saw a regular passenger service, with stations at Hazelwood from the village down a steep hill and originally called Windley, Shottle and Idrigy. There were three, rising to six, passenger trains from Derby each way, with one on Sunday, and two goods trains. By 1939, however milk was carried instead by road, and during World War II passenger travel was severely curtailed. There was also the hourly number 37 bus, which led to a decline in passenger numbers. Passenger trains were temporarily suspended in 1947 and were officially ceased in 1949. An hourly direct bus still operates between Worksworth and Derby with a journey time of 50 minutes. However this runs via Belper rather than directly along the main road. In the early 1950s people near the line were treated to the eerie sight of a railway carriage ghosting along, apparently by itself. It must be said that there would be some who remembered the use of steam motor carriages from the Morecambe and Hasham Railway at the beginning of the century, and steam rail motors from the Yarmouth and North Norfolk Railway. 
However this was the test vehicle for the new diesel railcars being designed in Derby, nothing more than a standard coach with the mechanism fitted and a windscreen cut in each end for the driver, that presaged a major change in British rail travel. When the so-called Derby lightweights were produced they were each tested on the line after leaving the workshop. One of the only three surviving of those originally built, M79900, was converted from being the Iris test car back to passenger carrying standard and has been joined recently by the other two. Residing on the line on which they were originally tested some 60 years ago. On August 25, 1981, a rail accident occurred when a fully laden freight train partially derailed 300 yards south of Worksworth. Although most of the goods had transferred to the roads, limestone traffic continued, including that formerly hauled by the Cromford and High Peak Railway, when it closed in 1967. Though the amount of traffic justified the installation of some continuous welded rail in the 1980s, production was increasingly of aggregate carried by road. In 1991 the quarries passed to Croxton and Gary Limited which no longer needed a rail link. Although its sidings, and the station goods yard, at Worksworth are still listed by Network Rail, the connection to the main line at Duffield has been severed and fenced off, there is hope that one day the EVR could once possible funding would be made purchase and reuse both the goods yard and the sidings for further slash extra space for some rolling stock and train storage. In 1996 Wyvern Rail were awarded a light railway order for the full length of the whole line. Worksworth Station was reopened in 2002, with the first half mile of line between Worksworth and Gorsey Bank reopened for a DMU shuttle passenger service in 2004, followed by a new line to Ravenster in 2005. On March 8, 2008, the railway began to branch its passenger operations further south by holding a grand opening ceremony for the line between Worksworth Station and Idrigy Station, three plus half miles of the line's total length. In 2003 Wyvern Rail agreed a 15-year lease purchase deal with Network Rail. In May 2005 they completed the purchase early and bought almost the entire railway. The only portion still leased is an area of the station yard in Worksworth which has been retained by Network Rail as a strategic rail site and is on a rolling three-year lease to Wyvern Rail. In July 2005 Wyvern Rail adopted Duffield Railway Station under a scheme promoted by the Friends of the Derwent Valley Line. They undertook to provide care and maintenance of the station on behalf of Central Trains who operated it at that time. The line has now been brought up to passenger carrying standards to allow trains to run through from Worksworth to Duffield. At Duffield, passengers can change for mainline rail services by crossing from the branch platform to one of the network rail platforms. Now that the line is open to Duffield it is the intention to revisit the larger shuttle site and refurbish the platform and surrounding areas. From June 24, 2012 a section of shuttle platform was reopened and it is now possible to alight there, although much work is still needed to complete this project. There may also be scope for reinstating the platform at Hazelwood but as of August 2015 there are currently no official plans. The railway principally operates on a token system, with the Worksworth to Duffield section currently holding one token in the form of an Annette's key. The Worksworth to Ravenster and Klein holds a different Annette's key. Due to a ruling gradient on the line, the Worksworth to Duffield section is protected by a trap point just north of Worksworth station. The Worksworth-Duffield line can now also be split in two sections with the installation of a passing loop at Shuttle. This currently only happens on special events and bank holidays, as it requires two signalmen, one at each end of the loop, to be stationed for the day as there is currently no signal box to control movements in and out of the loop centrally. The former Ottingley crossing box is currently being restored for use as a signal box at Shuttle. Two train operation should be able to happen more regularly once it is finished. An unusual piece of track work was installed at Worksworth on Platform 3. The track was interlaced either to allow the platform to be used for passenger trains or to allow wagons to collect stone from the adjacent dock. The interlaced section of track was operated by a manual tight point but still came under the control of the Worksworth to Ravenster train token. This feature has since been removed, however, as it was no longer required. There were very few physical signals on the line, apart from indications at crossovers. One semaphore signal was located almost underneath Cemetery Lane Bridge, but this has recently been relocated to Shuttle Station as part of the signaling project for the passing loop. Another electronic signal was located at Duffield Station to warn that it is the end of the line. It is believed that this signal was permanently lit for nearly 40 years, before being swept away in the reconstruction of the platform ready for the reopening. The railway has seen various filming projects take place. 
The first filming venture came in the form of the Hellman's Mayonnaise Big Dollop TV advert. The following year the railway was used again to film the National Geographic Channel's Seconds from Disaster where their ex-Gatwick Express coaches were used to depict the Eskied train disaster from 1998. In 2006 a location just south of Worksworth was used to film the ITV drama Mobile whilst in June 2007 Worksworth was used as the fictional station of Lightbourne in the BBC television series Casualty, Season 22, Episode 05. The storyline of Casualty involved both the Gatwick Express stock that is located on site as well as 03158 acting as an approaching goods train. This locomotive departed for the Lincolnshire Wolds Railway in June 2009 but has since moved again to the Great Central Heritage Railway. The BBC returned to the railway in August 2009 to shoot scenes for a new drama which aired between 1 and March 5, 2010 called Five Days 2 starring Saran Jones, Anne Reid, Bernard Hill, Matthew McNulty and Ashley Walters. The station at Worksworth was turned into the fictional station of Castlebury in Yorkshire. This time though it was the turn of the DMU to have a lead role, with Met Cam's E51505 and M51188 being used. Filming took place on Saturday, August 28, 2010 for an episode involving Darren Brown. The Illusion aired on September 8, 2010 and featured Class 122 M55006 at Shuttle on the line. DMUs currently provide the backbone of Wyvern Rail Services, though more recently there has been some steam in mainline diesel workings. The operational units based at EVR undergo regular maintenance, the type of work can range from mechanical servicing through to whole engine replacement, bodywork and repainting as well as the reconditioning of the interiors. The turnaround of each vehicle varies depending on the degree of work undertaken. This can be a few days, weeks or months but most are not usually withdrawn for lengthy periods. With a variety of operable DMUs based at EVR there is generally a sufficient pool of serviceable units to choose from in the event of a failure. The DMU team successfully restored Class 119W51073 to service. There is also another DMU currently being restored. This is to enable a unique three-car 101 set to be run, in green. Recently the Ecclesbourne Valley Railway Association funded, in conjunction with Wyvern Rail, the building of a temporary maintenance facility and a reasonable-sized water tank on the Wash Green Dock. This has enabled several restoration projects to start. One of the two Andrew Barclay 040 steam locomotives was completed during 2010 and ran several days on the Ravenster Incline. The other larger Andrew Barclay was completed in 2013. Both can now be seen on selected days and on the popular steam experience courses. Both of these projects have been funded by various grant funding as well as individuals and heritage lottery. Stored on site are two more locomotives on both of which overhaul to working condition has started. These are Catherine currently dismantled in the shed receiving a heavy mechanical overhaul and major boiler work, while W.G. Bagnell. Austerity the Duke has also received a complete mechanical overhaul, the boiler is under repair and other work is being carried out. This is being done by the owners in 48,624 locomotive group. Other locomotives have visited the line, including X Lancashire and Yorkshire Railway A Class No. 52,322, British Railway Standard Class 2's Nose. 78,018 and 78,019 as well as XGWR 5,600 No. 5,643 The LMS Carriage Association of Peak Rail has established a small workshop on the Worksworth site to provide further public interest in its rolling stock and enable more progress to be made on some of its fleet. Since March 2010 LMS period 3 3rd open 27,162 has been undergoing internal reconstruction from a strip state. This included not only the refurbishment of the remaining woodwork but the manufacture of many new fittings from scratch such as the seats and tables. The vehicle was the subject of a major fast-track overhaul to the bodywork structure at Shildon during 2009. Passengers were able to sample 27,162 during April-May 2011 when locomotive hauled passenger trains returned to the line between Worksworth and Duffield. Following the initial runs, the carriage was taken out of service to enable a full refinish including lining out of the exterior. During this work, the vehicle sustained major fire damage in the early hours of Monday, October 17, 2011 due to an accident as a result of welding. Vilmska intend to restore the coach to full working order with repairs likely to complete it during 2015. Vilmska are also focusing on another restoration project, LMS period 3 porthole BTK 27001 restoration is likely to take around two years. 
The result will be an open style interior similar to that of 27,162 with provision made for disabled passengers and will emerge as a BTO. This is also likely to be completed in late 2015 or early 2016. LMS Director's Inspection Saloon 999504 999504 is no longer used as a brake coach thanks to the restoration of a privately owned MK1 BSK.34625 early 2013 saw the arrival of a further three MK1 carriages from the now dissolved Stratford and Broadway railway site at Long Marston. These were a CK, SO, and an SK. A group was formed by the Ecclesbourne Valley Railway Association to refurbish the CK in time for the May Bank holiday weekend in 2013. Creating a three-coach MK1 set comprising a BSK, CK and SK. This was completed and the railway currently has six operational MK1 vehicles, two BSKs, two SKS, the Creek and the So. The So has been restored, now converted for use as a buffer bar coach. A further SK is currently on loan from the North Yorkshire Moors Railway. Ferrybridge now. Three on its first test run to Gorsey Bank after a total rebuild. Second built class 20D8001 weights at Worksworth in 2009 class 119 no. 51073, one of the first restoration projects to take place at the railway and one of only three surviving examples. Wyvern Rail Limited was established in 1992 as a community-owned and locally managed venture to restore and operate the Duffield to Worksworth Railway in Derbyshire, England. The initial plan was to lease the line from rail freight construction and operate a community railway service between Worksworth and Derby using leased diesel units, probably class 142 pacers. The model used was termed open access, a method of operation used by some operators today. The Railways Act 1993 created the framework that would allow Wyvern Rail to start the process, but the industry structure the act created also caused the whole process to slow down to a crawl. The line saving grace was the designation of Worksworth Station Yard as a strategic freight site, which meant that the yard was protected for railway use, thus making closure of the line extremely difficult. The line had already had a near-death experience in 1990 when a track lifting train began to lift approximately one mile of continuously welded track between Idrigy and Shottle. Fortunately, the work was stopped by British Railways management as it was reported that there was the possibility of new stone traffic on the line. As a result, The line was mothballed and the strategic freight site designation meant that this status remains on the line to this day. Changes to the structure of the industry following privatization meant that for several years during the mid-1990s Wyvern Rail often experienced difficulty in maintaining a consistent relationship with the authorities responsible for the line. However, while progress was slow on the ground, Wyvern Rail remained active wherever possible. While the most significant achievement was the award of a light railway order for the line in 1996, Wyvern Rail also investigated other projects. During this period, the company's approach changed from open access to a straight lease or purchase of the line. In 1997, the Derby and Worksworth Railway Association was formed in response to growing interest in Wyvern Rail's activities. The association grew slowly over the next three years but, after renaming itself the Ecclesbourne Valley Railway Association in 2000, Membership took off when access to the line was finally granted. For Wyvern Rail, progress began at Accelerate in the summer of 2000, when rail track management not only took an interest in the firm's activities but provided a proactive and imaginative basis for negotiations, including granting the company's volunteers access to the line. This approach led to the gradual restoration of the line, conversion to a PLC, and the successful share launch of Wyvern Rail PLC in April 2002. Thanks for watching.